is from the northeast corner of the compartment looking to the uh, northwest corner. This is cubicle number three as it sits against the north wall. You see the carpeting extending uh, almost to the wall. You see the uh, white line there which is the thermal couples coming out of the thermal uh, cubicle of this cubicle here which is arranged somewhat differently than the other two cubicles that we'll see. Looking toward the cubicle one, the distance with uh, the uh, uh, spray burner above the wall of cubicle one. Cubicle one and cubicle two are set up identically. See the uh, a couple trees here. Those two locations and the third tree um, to the east of the typical arrangement. See the lead wires going out and be fully uh, insulated. All the way out of the compartment. All the thermocouples in the compartment are treated that way. These summer couple of trees have water cooling in the interior, water cooling line. This is on right now. This is the uh, summer couple of tree in the northeast corner, about four feet from each corner. And there is a, a aspirated summer couple just to its left. And Top of it in the ceiling is another aspirated thermocouple there. Right there is one of the camera views of the interior. That's in the uh, east wall looking generally northwest. Moving to the cubicles. This will be cubicle number three. I'm having a hard time getting a vantage point on. Okay, uh, there is paper. Two reams in the top, uh, I believe in the bottom drawer of this uh, cubicle. Uh, there are the three reams laid out there. And the west wall smaller piles sitting here just under the bookcase. Notice the placement of the bookcase which is necessitated by the weight distribution on the load cells under this particular cubicle. There's a half a ream splayed out paper there. Sure putting this thing on autofocus. I'm going to stop for a minute. Okay, I just switched to autofocus. There's a thermocouple on top of the uh, dead surface there to tell us when that surface is burning. There's some paper. Notice this is the north wall view. Notice that we've got the uh, computer on the opposite side away from that the diagonal corner as in the other cubicles. Um, so there's a computer monitor sitting there in the north east corner of uh, cubicle number three. There's some more paper. And finally, in the southeast corner of this cubicle, there's four document boxes with four uh, rings of paper each, one ring of paper each. There's a chair placed at the middle length point facing toward the north. Uh, there's our Waste basket with one ring of paper in it and five wrappers from the paper. There's a computer. You see it's a gateway computer. It's actually a desktop computer sitting on its edge. And uh, underneath this, we have a thermocouple uh, under each section of the desk there also. Okay, this is cubicle number two. Uh, looking past the, uh, trying to look past the, the uh, thermocouple tree, standing right out in front of its opening. 
This is the conventional arrangement. Cubicle 1 and 2 have the conventional arrangement used in the single cubicle test with the paper layout. Three rings of paper there. Paper on the cubicle walls. The uh, bookcase is in the conventional position for this layout. This is on the south wall now. Uh, there's a thermocouple on the desk surface. And once again, we have a thermocouple in this corner, more or less under that computer monitor. And in this corner, about halfway along, more or less the midpoint of that section of the desk. That's the position they use for the under, under uh, desk thermocouples. There's the There's a computer, another gateway, uh, desktop computer sitting on the side, standard to the wastebasket arrangement. Uh, I'm going to move this chair a little bit to orient a little bit better. Okay, I'm still in cubicle two, looking at the east wall arrangement of materials. And here we have paper. in the standard uh, range that I used before. Two reams, one on top of the other, and an X and a crossed range. And over here in the bottom drawer, on the west wall of this cubicle number two, and also the exact same arrangement in cubicle number one, there's another two reams of paper in the bottom drawer. Okay, quick sweep of cubicle number one because its layout is identical to cubicle number two. They're on the south wall of the bookcase, from a couple of centimeters the midpoint of that desk section, and basically the midpoint of the comparable area to the side of the more or less in the computer monitor here. And we have the paper on this side and the document boxes, four of them with one ring each. And the same layout of the paper inside the inside the uh, File drawers under the desk. If you raise the ceiling, I can't get quite the view. I'm sure that's that hole. Okay, and our gateway computer again, it's the same type. Sitting on its side edge. There's a little better view of the chair. You notice it's a different uh, structure than the chair is used. Three seconds on, three seconds on. In the, uh, in the uh, single cubicle test. But basically the same kind of thing and uh, the same kind of base, looks like nylon again. So expect the same general behavior. And placement is comparable here. The only, the only place where placement is not comparable is in cubicle number three. This is a view uh, looking down the aisle between the cubicles. One and two on the right on the south wall. Number three on the left on the north wall. There's a three a couple trees in a row. The first two are basically in the openings of the cubicles, and uh, the distant one is uh, comparable distance further on. Well, there could be a fourth cubicle, but there isn't. So this is the layout of the carpeting here, uh, and it goes all the way down to this point, one and a half pile widths here. This is the uh, layout of the four nozzle heptane burner with a one meter by two meter pan adjacent to the uh, cubicle number one in the west wall right next to the openings simulating the windows. Um, and it's sitting approximately in base one foot below the top edge of the Another view of that burner. I'm standing in cubicle number one now, just pointing to the west through the windows, uh, simulated windows. Okay, over here we have a test wall. Uh, looking for failure modes, failure time here. The test wall, and there are four purge flux gauges in this 
current slides for the Two of them in this edge of the permanent, and two of them in the chip board itself. Okay, it's November 7th, uh, 2003. This is the interior of the second multiple cubicle test for the World Trade Center investigation. Uh, looking from the northeast corner toward the northwest corner, and looking at the side of cubicle 3, uh, again we see the carpeting uh, laying out, almost essentially touching the wall and extending outside of the edge of the cubicle here. Um, and uh, you notice one difference here is that the lead wires, there are only two tilts on a couple in each cubicle, we'll show where they are in a minute. This is Nextel wire now, Nextel lead wire. There's no protection on there except the silica insulation on the insulation. All the material that we have uh, similar kinds of thermocouples in the trees and in the uh, cubicles. Uh, and the locations will be noted in a minute. Still standing in the northeast corner now, looking to the south east corner. Uh, you notice the state of the uh, Maronite from the last test. This is more or less the situation throughout the compartment. Extensive fracturing, but no, nothing lost. Uh, that's, of course, the back uh, south. Uh, I'm sorry, the northwest corner. That is a new uh, chipboard wall, test wall, in that location. Everything else is showing signs of cracking and fracturing. And, uh, nothing has fallen yet, however. Um, the other thing you see here is the same summer couple trees are still in place. Uh, the same uh, aspirate thermocouples couples also, but now they're suspended with some wire to keep them from sagging. And on these, on the external parts of these trees, are uh, the Nextel wires, which are less frequent than the other wires. That are inside the insulation on water cool, which is pretty a mistake. Um, you see out here, next to cubicle two, you see lead wires running for the uh, uh, various wires coming off of one of the couple trees over in this direction. Looking up at the top of the third thermocouple tree. In from the along the corridor, in from the uh, opening on the west wall, just pulling the next tall wires down. You see, there's a thermocouple. And we notice this characteristic this, this next tall insulation tends to unravel easily, and it's been taped with glass tape. This is true of most of these wires and thermocouples throughout the compartment. Standing against the uh, east wall, looking down the corridor between the cubicles, showing uh, in the distance number couple three, number one, and number two, number number three. Number four is in the uh, corner to my right, in the north east corner to my right. Now standing outside of cubicle number three, looking at the layout of it, which is the same as in the previous test. Uh, Point out the cover couple in a minute. Uh, this is the, the different monitor, essentially the same location. There's the document box with one ring of paper each. There's paper on the east side. There's the monitor again. There's the chair in place at mid length point. There's the computer under the desk. Again, that's a desktop computer laying outside. It's now a different brand. Look at the thermocouple. There's the thermocouple on the desktop, and there's one over here uh, underneath uh, this corner of the desk. Also, there's only two thermocouples. Now, standing outside of cubicle number two, looking in at the east side, document boxes, paper, computer, 
a somewhat larger monitor that is a digital number three. Spend a couple on the desktop. Beneath the computer, there's a thermocouple couple on the underside of the desk also. It's the uh, document box is full of one and a third reams of paper each, and the bookcase, half a ream of paper splayed out there, and the half a ream here, and as in the other cubicles, uh, three reams of paper uh, each in the uh, right hand corner. Cubicle number one is laid out, intended to be laid out identically to cubicle number two. And let's see what branding has uh, a compact computer monitor there. Uh, there's a thermal couple on the desktop. Again, there's one on the computer on the other side of the desk there. Here in the uh, right corner, over in each. And let's go over to the computer and the desk. I can't read that. If you find it, but hopefully it's visible on the monitor. Or will be visible on the tape. And I need to do the same thing. I'm back in cubicle number two, and I'm just getting a shot here of the computer under the desk. Again, it's the desktop turned outside and the surplus from this to surplus. Here's the view of the uh, burner, which is the same layout as we had before, and this is a little bit more for wear. Here's the burner as seen by the cubicle number one. up the corridor from the opening side, the window side of the room. Following the leads from the first uh, out, you can see right here there's a big leaf covered on the map. Okay, this is the third uh, multi-cubicle test. It's uh, November 19th, 2003. We're looking from the northeast corner to the south east corner, uh, and much of the wall surface has been replaced since the last test. There's the uh, aspirated thermocouple in the ceiling, here's a um, thermocouple tree running up here with the external wire being next to us. Not all these thermocouples are in operation, unfortunately. Now looking from the uh, northeast corner toward the northwest corner, and uh, we see a couple of next uh, leads coming out of the uh, third cubicle. And um, carpeting extending not quite as far close to the wall this time as it did in the previous test. Uh, there's the layout in the room of the three thick cubicles. And in the distance, you see the um, four nozzle spray for the two megawatt heptanes fire that will take place here. Okay, next I'm going to go to the individual cubicles, where from even from here you notice that there is some material on the floors. This is going to be a combination of rubble on the ceiling on the floor and uh, jet A sprinkled over everything. Here's a view down the corridor before we placed any of the uh, tile rubble in place. Uh, so it's simply carpet covered. And there's the three uh, thermocouple trees. Again, not all these thermocouples are working, in fact, quite a few are not. I think the majority are not, even of the next style thermocouples. And over here is the uh, uh, number four thermocouple tree in the northeast corner. Looking into the entryway of cubicle number three, and uh, let me get over here so that we can see that it's got the uh, three reams of paper there. 
partially covered by tiles. Notice that some of the tiles look different than others. That means they're inverted. The tan means it's inverted. The white means it's uh, the side that normally faces the uh, the ceiling uh, in the uh, office space. There's our bookcase. Again, more tiles. Uh, tiles here. Percentage of tile coverage of the desktops is pretty small. I, think, I forgot what it is. I think they were 25%. Here we are, and still looking at the cubicle number three. You notice multiple tiles here. Um, this is uh, in accord with what we saw in the uh, drops from the ceiling in the mock-up, the scale mock-up. There's the uh, computer in this uh, cubicle. We do have a assembly couple on the top and a assembly couple directly underneath on the bottom of the, of the north end of the desk here. And we do have there uh, the usual computer set up. Confusing the autofocus here. Uh, under the desk near the computer. Here's the chair. Notice the half a tile sitting on the chair blocking of the order of 25% of its seat area. And here's the situation on the floor where the percentage of coverage is much higher. Um, looking just at the left side of the cubicle there and then over behind the chair at the right side. And again, you see multiple stacks of tiles uh, in accord with the fact that uh, we did see that in the uh, one-fifth scale drops. Uh, you notice that there is a, there is a tile under the chip of the desk there, and uh, there's a tile under the desk there. Those are the only two that are under the desk. Now standing in the entryway of cubicle number two. Cubicle two and one are meant to be set up identically, and in the same manner as the single cubicle burn is used, uh, done previously uh, under the hood. Once again, there's the computer, and there's the one quart, one half tile blocking one quarter of the seat area of the chair. Um, let's see, there's a thermocouple on top, almost blocked, but not quite by a tile. And directly underneath, it's a thermocouple on the underside. There's our bookcase, a few tiles blocking the frames of paper sitting on the desktop in the northwest corner of cubicle two. Paper on the walls, bookcase. Computer, chair, single tile there, and single tile there into the desk. And uh, that's that story. We're now standing in the entryway of cubicle number one. And once again, uh, it's set up identically to cubicle number two. So there's um, Tiles placed on top of the paper piles, and notice that the uh, tile placed where it is on top of the paper that normally ignites the computer uh, is going to block that process, so only the keyboard has a chance to act as a pilot for the computer. There's a thermocouple on top of the desk, a thermocouple underneath, as usual. There's our computers, compact, dead waste baskets, bookcase. Papers, tile, 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 tile. Uh, and three rings of paper, again with uh, tiles on them. And here's the layout in the, on the floor. Much greater coverage, multiple layers of tile. And there's the one underneath and another one underneath. Here's the uh, 2 megawatt spray burner, a addition source, placed in the same location that's been placed in the last two tests, next to uh, cubicle number one, about one foot below the top of the panel. And there is cubicle one, cubicle two in the distance, and across the aisle, cubicle three, the ladder in the way. So, there it is. And there will be jet fuel sprayed on all these surfaces. And there will be uh, tile on the, about 50% coverage of tile on the uh, carpeting in the, in the uh, aisle between the cubicles here. Okay, it's uh, the morning of November 20th, the day of the test, and now we have the tiles in place on the aisle. We 
have 50% coverage here with about 50% inverted tiles laid out in a nice pattern. It looks like we got a tile floor. Um, this is a broader view of the whole setup. Typical number three on the north wall, numbers one and two on the south wall. And we just walk over and show the layout. Kevin thinks it's too neat. Number two, one last picture. Here on the floor, uh, desk surfaces. Typical number three, floor. Desk, desk surfaces. Everything seems to be in place. Okay, it's November 25th, and this is test number four uh, of the multiple cubicle test. And now notice that the burner, four nozzle burner, heptane burner, has been moved to uh, in the interior and uh, is now next to cubicle number two in the same relative height as it was for cubicle number one all the previous tests. Uh, we have the same instrumentation set up. The thermocouple leads there to the two thermocouples under the desk. This happens in cubicle number three. Uh, we have this test will have no jet A, but it will have rubble, as you can see, the tiles on the uh, carpet there. We're going to look at each cubicle individually next, but first notice uh, this is thermocouple tree. Number four, two, a couple tree, number three there, and there's two others uh, there in the aisle. There's a closer view of the uh, spray burner from the end. They've just been uh, calibrating obtained flows. Looking into cubicle number three, notice the layout of the tiles here. Tiles on top of the case, tiles in various places on top of paper and the uh, desk surfaces, and then much more tile on the floor, including, including multiple layers of tile in accord with their drop experiments. There's the desk uh, chair, and I'm going to check its position in a moment. Still on cubicle number three, we're looking at the computer, which is a gateway. Uh, and there's the chair with this one quarter, or one half tile blocking one quarter of the surface. And now we're looking at the uh, east side of the tile arrangement, the paper arrangement on the east side of this cubicle. Now looking at cubicle number two, and there's the uh, burner right behind it, behind the uh, east wall. Looking at the layout of tile paper and across the various surfaces and I think I may need to move a couple things here. Uh, but let me first look at the floor. Notice the uh, tiles under the desk. Okay, looking again at this arrangement, I moved the chair back a little bit to be in, in line with the uh, halfway point seam. And I, I moved the tile over there and straightened up a little bit. Um, okay, there's our arrangement of computer and uh, waste basket behind the chair. There's all of the uh, paper in the bookcase. Well, then we're looking at cubicle number one, at the east wall of the cubicle, computer, computer box under the desk. All these have the thermal couples in the same locations as the previous tests there on top and below the desktop. Um, here's our 
you again. Piles on top of the paper piles and the rest wall area. And there's the stuff on the floor, there's my foot. And I just heard a tile crack under my foot. And now, finally, looking at the tile, the carpeting, and the ceiling tiles laid out. Half inverted, half mount. And here's a close up view of the thermocouple trees with the next tail thermocouples. This is cubicle number two. Lower layer. So you see on the bottom is a uh, wall panel. We're symmetrical left to right about the entrance. And here again there's a wall panel down on the bottom. On the bottom there is a desk. On the bottom over here is a desk. Next layer on cubicle number two, we've got a ream there, a ream there, a ream there, a ream there, a ream back there, a ream in the uh, uh, wastebasket, and an equal number of reams on this side. Here's the view from the west of cubicle number two. Uh, the uh, tiles here, of course, are 12 by 12 ceiling tiles. This is 9 by 24 inch gypsum board. And there's first here as well in the bottom layer. Okay, we're beginning to add more of the uh, uh, side panels onto this mess. And here we put uh, three panels on top of each other in order to assure that we've got space here for the jet fuel to get into and get a fire going on the underside of these panels, especially considering that the igniter will be here from above mainly. View from the west, the same setup. Cubicle number two. And there's panel on top of panel. And another panel on top of panel. So there's four panels. Deep there, there's a ceiling tile stuck in there. Nice gap. Some gaps here. Okay, there's an area under this side panel, which is held up by the computer. I mean, it's going to slowly collapse. There's an area under this side panel, held up by the chair. Um, do we want these? They have a little bit of plastic. Uh, I don't think it's worth it. Okay. One thing that we need to do now is we need to put. Okay, and here's the west view. The ceiling panel. Of this stuff. Yeah. On top. There's only half of it. Final arrangement on the number two. Um, much of the drywall except for oh, four, pieces four pieces near the bottom and on top of the lowest layer of materials here has been pulled out. Uh, so we're dealing primarily with ceiling tiles as the inerts here. And in the process of pulling that out, something we got jostled around. Alex, yes. You don't have any more of those little white pads, but it's only the pads as long as we get you outside. So now, the, for example, the ends of the bookcase is all totally rearranged. Yeah, Things are dark in there. Not necessarily okay. really arranged as they were in the beginning, with regard to where the ceiling tiles are vis a vis the desktop. 
Of course, the view. There's your ceiling tiles on top of. If you want to look exactly the same thing. Yeah. I mean, not exactly the same thing, but more like the ceiling tiles. They pulled out one more 9x24 piece of the chipboard out in the back in the far corner there. Three for test number five, which is partially uh, broken down here. This is the view from the east. This cubicle is against the north wall here on the right. And you see the computer underneath there. Side panels flipped over on top of the desk surfaces. Uh, large desk surface flipped downward on top of another panel. These corners to the south are still intact. Okay. Okay, and I'm looking from the south into the southeast corner. So. And there's the north wall, there's the panel flipped over with the two, there's the ends of the bookcases, the uh, waste baskets back there with a normal amount of paper, there's the top of the computer processor, there's the large dust surface, and here is the intact material on, on the south. Papers in the drawers as usual. Here's a view of the southeast corner with its four document boxes spilled over and covered partially with uh, intermixed with tiles and duport. And here's a view of this side of the cubicle looking from to the entryway. I'm not sure which, what was recording and what wasn't in the last few minutes here, so I'm going to redo all this. There's the entryway, paper, chipboard, document boxes, sealed around the base of the chair, which is upended, and uh, the area, computer desk area is totally down, pretty well supported underneath, so it should stay like that. The steel brackets are in place. Here's the southwest corner with the desk, three rooms of paper, and it's first covered largely by uh, chipboard. I'm looking now at the top of the uh, eastern side of the, the thing, looking at the various piles of paper in the southeast corner, and toward now up to the south, uh, the northeast side corner of the, of the setup. Now I'm standing in the entryway on the east side of the entryway, looking at number three on the cubicle. Scrolling down, showing the computer sitting underneath the. Uh, it's actually, that's the monitor, and it's sitting under this fallen two by four panel here. Behind it is the computer processor falling over, and the uh, wastebasket falling over back in there too underneath that part of the desk. Okay, now I'm standing in the entryway again. This is the western side of the entryway. Looking at lots of paper spilled. Blocking boxes spilled. These are all from the bookshelf. Looking into the area where they've fallen around the basic chair. And getting more perspective here. Inward. Uh, underneath all this is the uh, panel, the tall panel from the uh, bookshelf. It's actually underneath that desk. It's sloped under, down at 45 degree angle from the north.
Okay, now I'm looking from the west into the northwest corner. And you see the panel, the uh, five foot high panel, which had the bookcase on top of it, laying on the floor, blocking the floor. You see the wastebasket deep inside there. You can see, you can see a few tiles, chipboard and a tile sitting on top of that. Here's a slope desk. In addition to that bracket that you see there, with not holding it, there is a steel bracket in place which are holding it. And here's the stuff on top of that desk. If you want to look toward the northeast, you get the idea of it in this. Broken down in. And uh, we have. Definitely some changes are going to happen here in the spring rate of things. There's the southeast corner. Here's a view of the chair with the chipboard blocking. Here's a view of the southwest area, corner area. There's the paper, the white stuff is paper stacks. Yeah. I keep hitting the wrong button. And I'm trying to zoom. And there's the uh, bookcases of the file cabinets fully in place, un un unchanged. Okay, here I am standing next to the west wall, a little bit to the south, looking down at the desk, uh, the chair upended, and uh, showing how it is laying relative to everything else. And there's a number three over there. We have the water here. There's a story in yeah. north. Okay, we are resuming on December 2nd, 2003, to look at cubicle 3, which has had to be. Cubicle 3 has had some substantial redesignment, re redistribution of upper fuel items, at least, because of problems with the load cells. And uh, this is the new version, and this should be the final version. Um, one of the things that happened is that, that uh, one of the uh, file cabinets got removed. The other thing happened is that uh, some of the weight on the uh, diagonally off of the corners got redistributed here. So we'll try to review the whole thing. Okay, looking at the northeast corner. Uh, we see drywall, we see the computer processor, tile, carpeting, and uh, the edge here of the, of the file cabinet that's remaining on this side. Uh, on the other side of the computer processor is the wastebasket, which is a major fuel item that is potentially going to play upward and onto the underside of the desk, which is laying in there. Maybe the only thing that does that. And it's only catching one outer corner of it, the northeast corner of the big desk surface. Okay, coming up over the top, here's the still horizontal two foot by four foot desk surface with its panel connected to it. Uh, I'm working my way toward the this on the uh, east side of the cubicle. There's a two foot wide section of panel right there with several tiles and some chipboard on top. And there's, there's the undisturbed desk surface but largely covered. And there's, there is some paper under there. There's a pretty good amount of space. Now standing in the southeast corner, looking at the desktop, we see uh, some spilled, we remember those four uh, file folders in this corner, they're all spilled over and covered over by this panel section, two foot, by four foot panel section. And uh, okay, still continuing with the east side, there's the underside of what looks like in the you know, southeast corner. Coverage on the desktop surface there and paper and 
Here's a gap with uh, various pieces of inert material spilled underneath there. And uh, let's see. Here's the cabinet that got removed. And down below we have most of that area, carpet area, covered by inert material, mostly dipboard. There's one remaining cabinet there, we saw it on the other side, the east side. Uh, this is new, this panel laying here like this is new. You can see back in the corner. Into the top of the computer processor, which is leaning against the uh, tipped over uh, wastebasket. And we see we got a cool mess of material here. Let me look under this. So still looking from the southwest corner into the northeast direction. I'm looking under this panel with number three on top. We see the chair spilled over here. Uh, the various document boxes, paper with them. Underneath this is quite a bit of inner tile covering the floor, carpeting. And you see more spilled paper there. In the entryway, looking north, this is a four foot wide panel tipped over the top of everything. Again, this is done with a good weight distribution on the load cells. Here's the uh, southeast, southwest corner of the cubicle. This desktop still in place, sitting on top of a file cabinet, and it's uh, three reams of paper are in place, distributed about, and uh, rather extensively covered by inert material again. Okay, I'm working my way to it. Now we're looking straight from the west. This is the southwest corner, the cabinet in place. Here again is the stuff on the southeast corner. Stuff in the southwest corner. Here's this four foot wide panel. Here's what's underneath it. And here we see the legs of the chairs. You see just the wheels of the chair there. Visible far enough away that uh, that fire was not going to feed under this panel too well. That chair fire might feed under the panel on the southeast corner. But this panel desk surface has very little underneath it that's going to burn. This is a, this is a uh, panel laying on the floor and had a bookcase on top. Here's the, there's the wastebasket lying over inside there. That may get us some heat underneath the far edge of this big computer uh, corner desk surface. It's got firm of light stuff on top. And there's a space up here and then a Closure that's they're not going to burn too well because the top of it is just a panel of thermoplastic fabric. This is the table the panel. And closer here. This is what things look like on the top, the far side, and then on this side with the fair amount of this. Panel surface area on top, also covered by inert material tiles and zipper. Here's a lot of of the south west corner on top. Let me confirm, I just went over there and looked more carefully, that only the very bottom end of that wastebasket is going to feed fire up onto the underside of this uh, large corner desk section that's on a 45 degree angle or a 30 degree angle. Uh, unless it melts and flows in uh, all directions, it won't uh, be very effective at getting that, that going. But we'll see what happens. That's going to be the slowest part of the fire. So again, a lot of detritus on top of that. Uh, the gray thing on top of the dust surface, we see edge on here, beneath the paper and the dust surface, is the uh, bottom shelf of the bookcase. So it's steel. So that's, that's really hard. Okay, I'm standing in the northwest corner of the, of the uh, enclosure, looking right now at cubicle number one in a moment, and again, and then over to cubicle number two. Let me zoom in a little bit. Cubicle one, and then cubicle two. There's the burner in the distance, 
essentially adjacent to cubicle 2. As you're not familiar with for 10 minutes. And there's cubicle 3, which we've just been looking at. Um, now, the next thing I want to do, and we've got the usual uh, setup with the thermocouple trees here, and the usual setup with another carpet that we've got going down here. And then there's no uh, inner coverage on this, on this carpeting here. We're going to have Jet A here that's going to make a trail on that carpet. Okay, I want to get down to the uh, low level and look under these uh, piles that are making up people one and two. Okay, part of the sideways view here, but this is the view in under the pile, cubicle number one. You see a goodly amount of open area there in which there is spilled paper, spilled documents, boxes, and uh, looking in that direction, the computer behind it, the wastebasket along the center line, which also then includes the chair. Switching to the other side of this chair, and now looking into the same thing, we see again a tunnel, uh, a tent-like roof with a gap at the top, corner and chimney on either side of the chair and the computer. And again on this side we have a document box that's spilled and so forth, we have various inner tiles spilled out throughout there. I, I am now at looking at cubicle two down in under the spilled pile, trying to show the level of porosity here. And again, the same kinds of materials are present underneath this roof, tent roof, as are present in cubicle one. And this is the other side. This is the east side of cubicle two. And right there is the burner. So this is, the, again, the level of porosity and the amount of spillage, all the plastic parts from the bases of the thing are thrown in there as well. So that's an indication of the openness of this, and the layering above it. Okay, it's December 9th, 2003. This is test number six in the World Trade Center multiple chemical series. And I'm standing Whoa, in the north the safety lady. Look at this east shit. corner. Uh, looking at the summer couple leads at the moment coming out of cubicle number three. There's an overall view of cubicle number three, looking towards cubicle two and one, and the burner, uh, spray burner, sitting there in the uh, position next to cubicle number two. And we have the usual summer couple trees in place. There. <coughs> and then two more along the aisle between the cubicles. Okay, next I'm going to do a close-up of the uh, no, cubicle number three. Oh, shit. I'm standing at the south east corner of cubicle number okay, three, no, looking no, down no, at no, the no, uh, no. Uh, four Document boxes with one of your paper each. There's our piles of paper, there's our computer monitor, uh, as usual. And there's the computer box. And wastebasket on the other side of the On the other side of the chair here. And there. In the same place it was in the past test, but not in the same place as I marked. Uh, is the uh, thermocouple on top and below the desk indicating uh, involvement of that desk surface. And here we are looking at the different arrangement of cubicle number three on account of the necessity uh, uh, overloading of, this, of the uh, weight transducers. And there's the cable case. Looking at the uh, west side of the, of the cubicle, there's the one ring of paper each, and the paper on the wall, half ring paper here. Half frame paper okay. there. As usual, we've got paper two reams in the top drawer here, and uh, two reams in the bottom drawer of this uh, file cabinet here. So here's another view of the wastebasket with its usual 
five paper ring wrappers and one ring paper on top. Classic risk master. Standing in the yeah. northwest corner of cubicle number two, looking down at three you rings of paper. Along the desk surface, got half a ring of paper there, usual one and a third rings of paper in the bookcase, half a ring of paper here, and a couple above and below the desk surface. There's our computer. And wastebasket for the usual contents. There's a chair, computer monitor, and a keyboard, and a little bit of paper there. And, uh, inch high, three quarter inch high. There's paper here, and our four rings of paper and document boxes in the northeast corner of this desk, uh, of this uh, cubicle. And the usual paper in the uh, file cabinets. Left and right. Good half, but you and want to fast. North west corner, cubicle number one. Looking down at the three rings of paper on the wall of the desk. That's the half ring of paper skewed. Uh, Thirteen rings of paper in the bookcase. Half ring of paper on the desk. And a couple on the desk. Above and below. Computer. Waste basket. Placement. What's going out there? Um, your monitor, keyboard, paper, paper layers, document boxes, paper in the in the file cabinets as usual. There's the chair set up properly. Again, paper in the uh, uh, file cabinet. Notice that we have no in any of these. Do we have any clutter in terms of uh, wall and tile? Nothing on the floors. Nothing. On the desk surfaces, and we notice that the walls are in pretty rough shape here, but should be adequate. And uh, here's the state of the carpeting, running down past tree number one. Number two, and there's the one all the way to the top, of some cracks in the ceiling, tiles. And uh, this will be a Jet A ignited fire. The usual one, four liters per cubicle plus an extra liter on the carpet here. The only incomplete part here is, has to do with the carpeting and where I'm standing. Where there's uh, maybe half a square foot missing. I use a lot of pieces in this area. Here's the overall view then. 